Hagar and Ishmael. Genesis 16 and 21. Abram is called Father Abraham because he was the forefather of both the Jews and the Arabs. He was also the father of the family in whom Jesus, the Savior of the world, would be born. In this lesson, we will learn how Abram became the father of the Arabs. Disobeying your parents can get you in real trouble. When your parents tell you to go to sleep, having a pillow fight is not good. What if your parents tell you to stay with the group and you go off by yourself? Sometimes bad things can happen when you're all alone. It is better to obey and be safe. Getting in trouble is not fun. God loves us and wants the best for us. It is much better to obey Him. In this lesson, we are going to look at how Abraham and Sarah did not always trust God's wisdom and how it got them into trouble. This story about Abraham is found in the book of Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible and is the first book of law. The books of law are the first five books in the Old Testament. Let's say the books of law together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. God chose Abraham to become the father of a strong nation of people who would teach people everywhere about God. God told Abram that if he would leave his homeland and his family, that he would bless him by making his children into a great nation. God also promised to bless the whole world through his family and give him a great land. God spoke several times to Abraham to reassure him that he would have many children, as many as the stars in the heaven and the dust of the earth. But 10 years had passed since they'd moved to the land of Cana, and they still did not have any children. God even used a revelation to Abram to reassure him that he would keep his promise. Someday Abram's family would be a great nation. Now this must have been hard for Abram to completely understand because he and Sarah did not even have one child. When Abram told Sarah about the dream and the promise that God had given to him that he would have a son through his own body, she must have been very upset they both were very old, too old to have children. How could Abram have a son through his own body when she was too old to have children? What should she do? Day after day, Sarah must have thought about this and she could not figure out how the promise that God had made to Abraham could possibly happen. Sarah began to doubt. She did not want to disappoint her husband Abram. He loved her so much and she loved him too. Why had God not given them a son when she was younger and could have children? Sarah had an Egyptian servant called Hagar. So she took her to Abram and said, I've not bore children for you, but I'm giving you Hagar so you can have a child with her. Maybe this is what God means when he says that you will have a son through your own body. This was a terrible idea and definitely not what God had meant. Sarah was not trusting God. She was not willing to wait and see how God would work out his promise. She was trying to do things in her own wisdom and that is always a mistake. After a while, Abraham agreed to do what Sarah suggested. 
He should have known better, but he listened to Sarah. He did not wait for God to do something miraculous. He did not ask God, and so he sinned by doing things his own way. This always causes trouble. Soon Hagar was pregnant, but this did not work out as Sarah had planned. Hagar became very proud and arrogant. She thought she was better than Sarah. She even started to treat her mistress very badly and say very hurtful things to her. Sarah realized that what she and Abram had done was a very wrong thing. And finally, Sarah went to Abram and said, This is not working. Instead of Hagar being my maid and doing what she's supposed to do, she's treating me very badly. She thinks she is better than I am. What are you going to do about this? You have got to tell her to stop. Now Sarah was blaming Abraham for a problem that she had caused. Abram didn't want to deal with it, so finally he said, Okay, Sarah, you do with Hagar as you think is best. She is your maidservant. Sarah was so angry at Hagar for how she had despised her that she mistreated Hagar very badly. Now Sarah made life miserable for Hagar. Well, finally, in a fury of anger, Hagar left the camp. She ran away into the desert, but no one can run away from God. Alone and helpless, she stopped at a spring to rest and drink. Now in his kindness, God saw Hagar there, and he sent an angel to find her. Hagar, where have you come from, and where are you going? The angel asked. Well, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah, she answered. The angel then said, go back to Sarah and do what she asks you to do. You are to obey her and be a good maidservant. I will increase your descendants and they too will be too numerous to count. You will give birth to a son and you are to call him Ishmael, which means God hears because the Lord has heard your misery. Ishmael will grow up to be a wild donkey of a man. His whole family will be very aggressive. They will fight others and people will fight them. Well, Hagar had faith in God because she listened and obeyed the angel of God. She went back to Abraham and Sarah's camp, but she never forgot how God had come to her rescue. That day she called God by a new name and announced, You are the God who sees me. The well where the angel appeared to Hagar was called Berlairo, which means the well of the vision of life. When Hagar's child was born, Abraham named him Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. Now Abraham loved Ishmael, but he was not the son that God had promised. God had said that the child would be born to Abraham and Sarah. Hagar and Ishmael continued to live in the camp of Abraham and Sarah for the next 13 years, even though it was sometimes very tense. Sarah and Hagar were still jealous of each other. For the next 13 years, Abraham watched his son Ishmael grow up. He must have often played with him, and he may even have thought that he was the son that God had promised. But this was not God's plan. Ishmael was very different than Abraham. He loved to hunt and kill wild animals. He became very good with archery. Just as the angel had told Hagar earlier, Ishmael had difficulty getting along with his family. Ishmael began to taunt and tease others. 
particularly Sarah's son. This caused a great deal of tension in the family. He even despised Sarah's son on his birthday. Well, this constant mocking finally caused Sarah to go to Abraham once again and demand that Hagar and Ishmael leave the camp. Sarah said, you must get rid of that slave woman and her son because he will never share in your inheritance. Abraham was very distressed about Ishmael, so he prayed to God. God answered him and said, Do not be distressed about Ishmael and Hagar. Listen to Sarah, because it is her son who I have promised to bless. But I will also make Ishmael into a great nation, because he is your son. So early the next morning, Abraham took some food and water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and sent her off into the desert with Ishmael. They wandered in the desert of Beersheba for a long time. Finally, the water was gone and they were about to die of thirst. Hagar laid her son Ishmael under a bush and began to cry. God heard her cry and sent an angel. The angel said, God has heard you and the boy crying. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God had performed a miracle in providing water for Hagar and her son Ishmael. God was with Ishmael as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. He and Hagar did not return to Egypt, which was Hagar's homeland. Instead, they lived in the desert where God protected and provided for them. Ishmael married an Egyptian girl and they had many children. God had told Hagar that Ishmael would be the father of 12 sons and they would be especially hostile to the nation of Israel. Ishmael's family became the Arab nation that we know today. And just as God said, the Arabs and the Jews have been fighting each other throughout all of history. Even though Abraham and Sarah had faith in God, they sometimes doubted how God would accomplish his plan. And it certainly got them into a lot of trouble. Our memory verse is James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. God wants to guide us into good things. When we doubt God, we are headed for trouble. Let's say our verse again. James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Abraham and Sarah doubted God's promise, and Ishmael was born. He became the father of a nation that has always been rivals of God's chosen people, the Jews. Their doubting led to much trouble. And that trouble still continues today. Lot was another example of not asking for God's wisdom. He selfishly chose the land that looked good to him. Soon he was in trouble and was taken captive by the enemy. God had to use Abraham and his men to rescue him. Not asking for God's wisdom got him in trouble too. We too must learn to trust God in everything. When we are faced with a decision, we need to seek wisdom from God. He is generous and will give us the answer that is best for us. Then we must believe and trust God and obey Him. Doubting will get us in trouble, just like it did for Lot and Abraham and Sarah. Let's pray. 
Dear Father in Heaven, help us to trust in you. You love us and desire good things for us. And yet, sometimes we want to do things our own way. Forgive us for not trusting in you. Lord, help us to wait on your will and plan for us. We want to obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, ask God for his wisdom and obey him. <laughs>